After 17 years of sacrifice, I discovered my wife's betrayal. Now I'm raising kids that aren't mine while she's making money on OnlyFans. I, 37M, have been with my partner, 36F, for 17 years. I am the sole provider for my family of six partner, four kids, and two high-energy dogs. I work five days a week and sometimes on weekends if we need a little extra cash. My partner is a stay-at-home mom and hasn't worked since our eldest was born by her own choice. Auntie, I wake up at 5 a.m., take the dogs out, prepare the kids' lunches slash snacks, ensure all school essentials, such as bags, are by the front door, and then head to work at a physically demanding job. The kids are picked up for daycare slash school at 7. Due to after-school activities, clubs, etc., they're not home until 6. I come home at 7 and make dinner most nights, help with homework, do bedtime for the little ones, do the dishes, take the dogs out for a, if the house is a mess, I will, of course, clean it. I pay for everything. Mortgage, bills, insurance, groceries, clothes, toys, technology, after school activities, dates, and a woman to deep clean the house once a month. My partner wants to go on a two-week vacation with her friends, which will overlap with a weekend trip I had planned with my brother, whom I rarely get to see as we live far away. She wants me to cancel my trip because she's tired and needs a break. We got into an argument where unkind things were said on both sides, but I am unwilling to budge on this. How do I get through to her that I need some rest? Eat it. Hello all. Sorry I haven't replied to many comments, but I have read most of them. I've seen a couple of questions I'd like to answer. My children are between 16 and 6. My wife doesn't take anyone to their clubs slash activities. The younger children's school finishes at 3 p.m and their clubs are held at school. The older kids' school finishes at 3.30 p.m. They stay in a club until 4.30 p.m., and then go to a youth group with their cousins until they home. So my eldest makes their way to and from school on their own, while my youngest are picked up and dropped off. The kids are, of course, able to eat breakfast at home, but they often enjoy eating with their friends before school starts at 8. My wife doesn't walk the dogs because she doesn't like to, and frankly they don't like her. I enjoy my time walking the dogs because it allows me some time to think. We have a large yard with dog houses, toys, and some agility equipment for them to use while I'm gone. They also get mental stimulation through Kongs and puzzle toys which have been prepared and stored in the freezer. What does my wife do all day? Honestly, she's not isolated. She often tells me about things she's done with her friends, sister, or mother. She goes to the gym and enjoys hobbies such as embroidery, knitting, and some jewelry design. She changes what she likes to do, saying it keeps things fresh. Housework-wise, she does the laundry I fold and distribute later, and she gives the dogs water and their prepared meals. So we have robot vacuums and air purifiers to handle the dog hair, but my wife will vacuum if needed. I wipe the countertops and load the dishwasher after meals. The older kids take care of their own rooms and bathrooms for an allowance. Have you ever not truly noticed something until it's right in front of your face? I was so mad because I wanted to go see my brother and she wanted to go on vacation with her friends. Yes, she wants me to pay for it. And things have been like this for so long that I didn't see how unfair and imbalanced things were until I really started to look at how our duties were distributed. You've all given me a lot to think about. I'll answer some comments later. Update three weeks later. Here is the update. It's not good, but it's not totally bad either, because apparently I've sprouted a backbone. A lot has happened, and I feel like my world is falling apart. This will be long. The following paragraphs provide more background before I get into the update. Some of you have suggested that I enable her behavior, and I'd like to address that to explain how things got this way to begin with. My wife worked from age 16 to 20, but I'd often come home after work during the early stages of her pregnancy. And she would tell me how bad the morning sickness had been and how she was getting in trouble at work for being late or not showing up due to the issues she was having. One night, after a long discussion about things, she suggested that it would be easier and better for her and the baby if she stayed home during the pregnancy. I was reluctant at first because we weren't exactly swimming in cash, but ultimately, the health of my wife and child was more important than a few months of added stress. To save money we moved in with my wife's older sister and her husband. We split rent and utilities but were still able to save some money. The pregnancy wasn't easy on her. She was often cranky and uncomfortable, and as a result could be quite mean, rude, and a bit physical. After further discussions with my wife and her sisters, 
I took on more of the household duties, such as cooking. So when my eldest was born, my wife's sister helped with child care while I was at work for the first year. However, after she and my wife had a fight when he was about a year old, we moved into our own place. My wife struggled during the day when I wasn't there to help, so we ultimately decided to put him in a daycare facility. I would drop him off on my way to work and pick him up on my way back home. Once home, one of us would cook dinner while the other watched the baby. Back then we had no pets, so household duties weren't too much and could be handled with a couple of hours of cleaning on Saturday or Sunday, which we split between us. When my son was three, my wife's sister offered to help her get a job where she worked. My wife had to go through an interview, but my sister-in-law was confident she'd get the position. My wife was reluctant and nervous about returning to work, but she attended the interview and was offered the job. I don't remember much of our celebrations that night, but it ended with the conception of our second child. My wife told me about the pregnancy when she had been at her new job for over a month. She stuck it out for a couple more weeks, but was fired due to not showing up for shifts. I asked one of her doctors about the issues she was having early in the pregnancy, back pain, leg pain, nausea, etc. But my wife cut me off before I could finish and asked me to leave the room. When we got home, she berated me for speaking to her doctor as if she were a child and told me that if she wanted something brought up to her doctor regarding her pregnancy, she'd do it herself. She said I had embarrassed her because she knew her body and what was normal and what wasn't. I still thought the issues needed to be addressed with her doctor, but whenever I brought it up, her mood swings would get worse. My mother-in-law came to live with us for a short while when my second child was born, helping out when I returned to work after paternity leave. When my daughter was about four months old, my wife expressed that she was having difficulty looking after her by herself during the day. However, my mother-in-law, who had her own life and responsibilities, couldn't stay indefinitely. We had a two-bedroom apartment at the time, and having her sleep on the couch didn't seem fair to me. So we enrolled my daughter in daycare, and my son went to daycare after nursery as well. I'd pick them both up around 6 p.m. and head home. My wife promised she would speak to her doctor about the possibility of depression and her mood did improve with the tea additional help with the children. My wife took on cooking and cleaning duties then, but she struggled as well. I would often come home to burned or ruined food, and I'd need to make something else anyway. So I ended up cooking dinner most nights to avoid wasting food. During a weekend away for a friend's wedding, when my daughter was five I suggested that my wife go back to work. Both kids were in school by then, and I thought we could improve our lifestyle with two incomes. We had recently bought a house because the apartment was too small and the children needed their own rooms. She seemed hesitant, which I understood after being out of work for so long, but she agreed. She applied for several positions but had no luck with interviews or callbacks. We found out she was pregnant with our third not long after that, and returning to work was put on hold again. Oh, the pregnancy was difficult, as expected, but once again, my mother-in-law came to stay when I had to return to work. She stayed for a while but eventually had to return to her own home. Before she left, my wife told me she feared she would struggle with our second daughter, just as she had with the first. I tried to reassure her, but she seemed to become extremely depressed the moment her mother left. I would return home with the eight- and five-year-old to a screaming baby and nothing done around the house. Her mood and actions affected the entire household. Reluctantly, I put our second daughter in daycare as well, but I told my wife she had to talk to her doctor and that we would no longer be having any more children. She was angry, and we had a huge fight about it, but I got a vasectomy, and she eventually accepted it. We've always used protection. My wife is on birth control, and I always use condoms, but given that it had already failed twice for us, when my first was conceived after my 21st, I was so drunk I don't think I wore one, and our second after celebrating her new job, and our third at our friend's wedding, I didn't want it to happen again. But obviously the universe had other plans for us and our third daughter was born two years after our second when we were celebrating a promotion I'd gotten at work. Obviously, this is a brief summary of events, and there have been several other moments over the years when I've suggested she go back to work. I thought I'd provide further background for those curious about how we got to where we are. Someone asked if my wife has had a break recently. She has never taken two weeks away before, but she goes away a couple of times every year for weekend trips with family and friends. The longest she's been gone is a week. In regards to the dogs and why they don't like her, it's because she doesn't like them. She thinks the stimulation I provide through con toys, games, puzzles, etc. is unnecessary, but freaks out if their energy levels are too high. One is a German Shepherd, which I was gifted for my birthday, and the other is a German Shepherd Malinois mix that my wife brought home 
because she thought our GSD needed a friend. Yes, they have been to training and were originally in doggy daycare for the first couple of years. Now, on to the update. As one of you suggested, I took a day off work. I genuinely wasn't feeling too good either, but I intended to speak to my wife about the situation while the children were at school. The kids all left for school by 7-ish, and my wife came downstairs at 11.45. She seemed very shocked to see me. She asked what I was doing at home, and I explained I took a sick day as I wasn't feeling well. The first words out of her mouth were, but we need the money, you don't look that bad. So I made a face, and she quickly asked what was wrong, and if she could get me anything. I asked for water, and we sat on the couch, but soon her phone rang, and she went into the kitchen to talk. She came back a while later, and asked if I wanted to get something to eat. I said we could make something from the kitchen. She said she wanted to go out, but I said we could order takeout since I wasn't in the mood to go out. The dogs had been sitting by the chest freezer near the pantry, waiting for their lunchtime enrichment for about ten minutes. I asked if she was going to feed them. She flopped onto the couch and asked me to do it. I said no. She asked again, and I said no again. She glared at me but eventually got up and fed them. She kept asking me to take her out several times, and I kept saying no. I was starting to get a migraine, which I told her. But she continued asking, suggesting we could go shopping, she could get her nails done, and we could enjoy the day together. I refused again and said we had something to talk about. She agreed but then went upstairs. She came back down 40 minutes later, dressed up, and said if I wasn't going to take her out, she'd go herself. I tried to get her to sit down so we could talk, but she blew me a kiss at the door and rushed outside without even locking it. While she was out, I took some of your advice and canceled the cleaning lady we have. I apologized to her, as I really did like her, but she was very understanding, and I think we parted on good terms. She returned home at 8 p.m. and immediately asked where dinner was. I told her the kids and I had already eaten. She then asked where her dinner was, and I told her she'd have to make something for herself. She said she'd just order something, and I told her no. This gave her pause and she looked at me like I just told her she had to starve. She said she couldn't cook, and I told her I knew she was perfectly capable of making something. We have plenty of food, she doesn't need to be Gordon Ramsay to heat up a tin of soup or something on the stove. She left again and returned 30 minutes later with McDonald's just for herself, which set the younger kids off. Yes, they'd already eaten, but she walked in the door finishing her burger and drink with an empty bag and McFlurry tub. So our youngest asked why she didn't bring her any ice cream, and my wife replied, Daddy said I wasn't allowed to, so I did not say this, and it took more strength than I'd like to admit not to yell at her in front of our daughter. After the kids were in bed, I asked my wife to sit down and talk about the situation regarding our trips. She asked if I had rescheduled with my brother, and I firmly told her no and that I wouldn't be. I tried to have a calm conversation. I explained that I felt our duties were incredibly uneven and that I'd like for her to take on more responsibilities with the children in the house. In the house. She argued that she does enough, so I asked her to make a list of what she actually does. She listed laundry, feeding the dogs, making doctor's appointments, and grocery shopping. I brought out my own list, detailing everything I've shared with you so far, and added that I create the dogs' meals, she simply has to give it to them. I also fold and distribute laundry, take the kids to their doctor's appointments, and pointed out that groceries are ordered through an app on her phone, delivered to the house, and I'm the one who puts them away. At that point, she got up. She got up. I asked what she was doing, and she said she was going upstairs. I didn't argue, as I didn't want it to escalate into a fight and risk waking the kids. She was visibly shaking with anger. A while later, I went upstairs as well. She was on the phone with someone and when I entered the room, she demanded I leave and sleep on the couch. So I refused and climbed into bed. She hung up the phone and demanded again that I sleep on the couch, and again I refused. She then grabbed me and physically tried to drag me out. That led to a fight, and I ended up sleeping on the couch, because I didn't want her to wake the kids. The following days were much of the same. I've stopped folding and putting away her laundry. I still do it for myself and the younger kids, and my two oldest take their own piles and put them away. I continue to cook for the kids, but I've told my wife that she needs to make her own meals. Petty, I know, but I felt like something had to change. I think my eldest heard us arguing because he asked if he could take the dogs out for a couple of walks with his friend during the week. He has, and he says he's enjoying it, but I think he and my wife had an argument the other day because he's been very distant with her and things just feel off. He's asked me about three times if I love him. Of course, I've reassured him that there is nothing he could ever do to change that. Yes, I've tried to talk to him about it, but he doesn't want to open up yet, and I need to respect that. I think pushing him might be a mistake, 
Thursday night, my wife asked if we could have a drink, as I had to leave on Friday to see my brother. I had one, but it went straight to my head, and honestly, I just wanted to sleep. She kept trying to initiate bedroom intimacy, but I wasn't in the mood. I woke up Friday morning, and my wife was gone, along with her suitcase. I've texted and called, but there's been no answer other than a text saying we'd talk about it when she gets back. She ignored me and went on her trip anyway, and I am furious. I left her some cash in the bank account she has access to, but I've moved everything else into another account. I had to call my brother to explain why I wouldn't be coming to see him, and on Saturday he arrived with my nephew and two nieces. The house is very full, but honestly it feels more open than it has in a long, long time. The kids seem relaxed, and so do the dogs. I don't know what will happen with my wife, but I'm done. I can't afford a lawyer right now, and unfortunately, I don't know anyone who could give me a deal or do me a favor. But this marriage is over. It should have been a long time ago, up on if his wife might have undiagnosed health problems including peed. I spoke to her about the issues she was having because she wouldn't. When the doctor asked her what was going on and how she was feeling, she would say the pregnancy was fine and that she had no issues. Yet at home all I heard was how hard things were, how sick she felt, and how sore she was, along with the constant screaming and yelling at me. I went to the bed because I'm six feet five inches and work a physically and mentally demanding job. It's not good for my body to sleep on a two-seater couch. I needed to rest since I had work in the morning. She escalated the situation and got physical, not me. She made the argument worse, not me. Undiagnosed peed. She's been to her doctor, who diagnosed her with nothing, she told me that herself. And as for me knocking her up, it takes two people to create a child. We don't live in America, and my wife is pro-choice. So if she had wanted to terminate the pregnancy, she had the ability to do so. After our second child was born, I told her I didn't think having more kids was a good idea, but she insisted. I said the same thing after our third, and even after my vasectomy, and she lost her mind. Let her go on vacation and feel like herself for the first time in forever. Did she not feel like herself when she went on multiple weekend trips with her friends last year? Or when she goes out for lunch dates with the girls every month? Do you know the last time I saw my brother in person, before the pandemic? He's here to support me. If you think it's fine for my wife to go on vacation so I can't, then it's perfectly reasonable that my brother can come to the home I pay for when I need him. Are you my wife? Second update six hours later. I'm not going to add this to the post as it's already long enough. Please excuse any spelling mistakes as I'm so tired. Thank you all, but I'm not in America. I know a lot of you have suggested I message her, telling her I'm going to divorce her, etc. But I think I'm going to play it cool, act like I've accepted her decision so she's not on guard. I know she said something to my son, but he won't tell me what it is, and I feel like if I push him, he might not ever open up. My nephew and he are hanging out a lot, they're close despite not seeing each other much. So I'm hoping he might confide in him, and maybe eventually open up. I'm not just letting this go, we will talk, but I don't want to push him too much. I'm not a lightweight I can drink, but I've been exhausted and I mean very exhausted for some time now. I think that's maybe why I passed out after just one drink. But I would be lying to myself and to you if I said I wasn't suspicious. I'm suspicious of a lot now. I swear, I'm not an idiot, but I really feel like one right now. Some of you have suggested I get the kids' DNA tested, especially my youngest. While I know this is likely something I'll have to do, it breaks my heart to think they might not be mine. My girls all look the same just older versions of each other. So if I have to test the youngest, I'll have to test them all. I never wanted kids, which is why I've always used condoms. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I love my kids, these kids, no matter what. Regardless of the DNA test results, they are mine. But I fear if it comes back that they're not, it could damage our relationship. My brother has read my posts and spent the last few days telling me everything he hates about my wife, Obviously not in front of the kids. He's pretty funny, and I feel like I haven't laughed like this in a long time. He says he's going to make a Reddit account. Lord knows what he'll say. Writing this update has really opened my eyes even more. I can now see how the timing of me wanting her to go back to work lines up with each pregnancy. But when these things are years apart, and you're focused on supporting the family and managing work, your brain sometimes pushes these thoughts away. Then something triggers them. And suddenly, you're slapped in the face with the realization that your entire relationship might be built on a mountain of lies. She has her phone and iPad with her, so I can't check any of that, but I'm going to be going through her things. Is it an invasion of privacy? Likely. Do I care right now? No, 
I feel like I've wasted the majority of my life, my good years, and it feels horrible to say that when I have four kids, I promise I don't mean they're a waste. As I said in the post, this marriage is over. I'm done. My kids deserve better, but I won't be alone when I confront her. As I mentioned before, she can get handsy, and no, I've never retaliated, and I don't want to be put in a position where I'd need to. I want to thank all of you for your comments, insight, and kindness. I know I haven't replied to many comments, but there are so many and I don't have much time right now. I am trying to respond to DMs, as that seems easier to manage. I'm thinking about asking my sister-in-law what really happened with my wife and that job, but I want to come off as suspicious. So my sister-in-law is kind, but she's also my wife's sister, so her loyalty likely lies with her. I don't want to tip off my soon-to-be ex. Does anyone have ideas on how I can bring this up naturally? It seems strange to ask about a job my wife held briefly years ago. I wish you all the best, up on the accusations for not respecting his wife's needs and wants. How do I not respect her needs or wants? I pay for everything and handle the majority of the child and pet care, as well as most of the housework. I haven't gone on vacation in years because I've been providing for my family. For 17 years I've given her everything she's wanted, and yet she couldn't give me a single weekend with my brother. Why couldn't we both go on vacation? because I don't have the money to fund a two-week trip for her. I can't just leave my 16-year-old to care for three younger kids and two high-energy dogs. I couldn't take them with me either, because that would mean paying for multiple plane tickets, accommodations, food, and dog sitting or boarding for the dogs. Third update one month, three weeks later. Hello all, I'm sorry it's taken so long to update. Things are not good. This update will be brief, but I'll try to do a longer one when things improve. Yes, we are separated and we'll be getting a divorce. My father-in-law has graciously offered to help. It's taken me a while to update because as many of you suspected, some of the children aren't mine. So my eldest, my son, is mine, but my three daughters are not. I found out not long after my first update, and while I thought I could handle the news, clearly my body couldn't. I had a heart attack. Thankfully, my brother was with me and called an ambulance. I am recovering, but it scared the hell out of me and my family. As some of you may remember, when my ex left for vacation, I took most of the money out of the account she used but left around $500 so she wouldn't be stranded. So that money was gone in a few days. She used her own money, which she's been making from of, to fund her trip. Yes, I'm serious. She has enough account. My son, who had offered to take the dogs out for me during his lunch free class time, walked in on his mother making content in the living room. She told him that I wasn't making enough money for the family to survive and that she had to do of to help support us. She also told him that I was ashamed and embarrassed by it and that I would be very unhappy and hurt if he ever mentioned it. She even told him that speaking up could ruin our marriage and lead to a divorce. So my in-laws know everything now, as my brother had to call them to help watch the kids while I was in the hospital. So my father-in-law is furious and my mother-in-law is just devastated. She keeps apologizing to me, like she's the one who betrayed me. My ex has moved out. She initially tried to make me leave so she could stay in the house with the kids. But after a conversation with her father, she's now renting a place. My eldest daughter and son know the girls aren't mine. My ex told them after they said they didn't want to live with her in her new place. So my mother-in-law was with them at the time and, according to my daughter, began screaming at my ex for her behavior. So my youngest two don't know yet, but they will. This isn't something I can keep from them forever. So they already know something is up. I've cut back my hours at work and have been able to work from home. It's a desk job for now, but I'm really thankful to my boss for being flexible and working with me on this. When I got home, I found out that my mother-in-law and one of my sisters-in-law had cleared out my ex-wife's hobbies hobbies and turned it into an office slash dean for me. I'm very grateful for their support during all of this. I know it can't be easy for them to take the side of their daughter slash sister's ex-partner during a breakup, but I truly appreciate their kindness. While things aren't great by any stretch of the imagination, I feel oddly strange. Things seem calmer without my ex in the house. There's more laughter around, and even the dogs seem more at ease. But I am so, so angry. Obviously, that's not good for my heart, but I feel like I've wasted a huge chunk of my life raising kids that aren't mine in a marriage that was messed up from the beginning. Now, please don't take that as me saying I regret my girls I don't at all. They're smart, beautiful, cheeky little weirdos that I love with all my heart. But the betrayal stings. The fact that I've been working my ass off for years while she's been making thousands on of and keeping it to herself stings even more. I'm ashamed, humiliated, embarrassed, angry, and relieved. 
It's a mess of emotions in my head, but I know I'll get through it. I have two, for my kids and my dogs.